Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to my brand new apartment. Just kidding, I am currently in Austria, Salzburg, Austria with Red Bull doing some really cool stuff which can't really talk about but it's okay. Getting on to the point of the video, I'm going to be reacting to my old Instagram photos. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while now but I haven't really got around to it and I think it would just be a really interesting thing to go look back at it and see how I've changed throughout the years and what advice I would give to my younger self starting out on Instagram and hopefully that teaches you guys and helps you guys along in the process of getting started on Instagram as well. So in saying that, I'm gonna jump onto my page on my laptop right now and we'll get into reviewing my own old content. Okay, first things first, it's gonna take quite a while to scroll all the way back on my Instagram page. So I have like over 1,300 posts or something. All right, so after about five minutes of scrolling, I finally made it back to the start of my Instagram account. And as you can see, there's actually like a drawing, the only drawing feature on my Instagram account. I did this in high school, so if you guys wanna see a drawing that I've done, check it out. Anyway, getting on to the real reason of this video and that is looking at my Instagram photos. So the first photo I ever took on Instagram was this one of me balancing a soccer ball on my head at a sunset on a beach. Um, this was like kind of the first photography kind of picture that I ever posted before I just had like a standard personal account where I'd post random selfies. But I guess the first real photography picture that I actually took was this one of Table Mountain and I think it's pretty good actually, like the composition looks good, uh, the landscape looks pretty epic. I think the one thing I would do now though is maybe just use an adjustment brush to darken the mountain a bit more just to, it looks a bit bright and washed out for me right now. And then something I also like to do in my feet a lot more um, recently, which I'm sure you guys pick up as well, is I like to include figures in my landscape. So I think if I was going back then, I would just pop somebody up in the grass over here just to show the scale of the landscape and compare them with the background and the foreground so it just gives more depth of field as well. And then moving on, oh, these photos were terrible. So this was like the first Instagram mission that I ever went on. Um, I went with my friend Evolt and we went to Newlands Forest out in Cape Town and I had no idea what Instagram was, but he invited me on this Insta meet and what actually happened is we missed the Insta meet. We got there and we couldn't find anybody, so we just went on our own mission. That's what kind of got me hooked into Instagram and this whole adventure aspect of it because we had no idea where we were going. We had never been there before, but we were like, yeah, we're gonna go explore this forest and take some cool photos. So I went out with my friend and as you can see, the photos really aren't the best. Um, I put him like right on the edge of the photo, which I probably would never do now. So giving advice to my younger self, I would tell myself to use the rule of thirds, so for those of you that don't know, the rule of thirds is third grid lines. It pretty much comes on like every iPhone and every camera. So it's just rules of composition. So it makes the photos look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I would just post my friend, the subject, your subject on the rule of third line, horizontally as well as vertically. So you could line the landscape up with the bottom third. I mean, it kind of is on this one, but not the best. And also don't cut their feet off. Either get it like really close up or a bit further back, but don't cut them like right on the edge. Also, there was like no editing to this photo at all. But anyway, going on <laughs> are the old school jump shots. The Instagram jump shots. Oh, this is so bad. And so my friend was like, hey Dean, just like I saw these pictures on Instagram of people just jumping. So it's like, just go stand on that rock and jump for me quick. So I was like, okay. I don't really know how to look aesthetic in a jump picture, but it's like, cool, just go stand on the rock, do a jump for me. So me being somebody that has no idea how to do a really cool jump shot, I like put my arms out and did like this Jesus Christ jump shots. <laughs> it's just so bad. Like, if you're gonna do a jump shot, please don't do a jump shot because it's just like so old school Instagram and cliche and it's like, why? I mean, it, it was cool at the time, but if you're gonna do it, like make sure that you're clearing the landscapes to get a bit of a lower angle so there's space between you and the actual land. Otherwise, it, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> But no, oh, it's just so bad. Anyway, so I tried the whole jump shot thing as I'm sure everybody on Instagram two or three years ago tried. And I'm sure everybody starting out Instagram tries as well, but it's all good. It's part of the learning process. As you guys can see, my photos were like really bad back in the day, but it's part of the process. Oh, the hand, the hand to the sun shot. I wasn't even pointing it out at the landscape or something. Like you still get really cool hand to the sun shots, but with a really cool background. And this is just like straight up at the sky. And I was like, yeah, it looks so cool. And oh, even my caption, reach for the sun because it's the biggest star out there. Young Dean killing the game. 
And oh, moving on to mention more about Young Dean. Look at this picture. I look so young <laughs> compared to how I look now. I feel like I've just grown up so much. What is this? This is terrible. I'm just like, yeah, come with me. Take my hat and we can go on an adventure together. And those glasses, oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. I actually still have those glasses, but I like never wear them just because it looks terrible. And yeah, that double chin life as well, just like, if you're gonna take a low angle picture, make sure that you get your subject either like looking up or looking to the side, but like kind of up so you emphasize their jawline a bit more. Don't get them looking down at the camera and like getting that double chin life, unless you wanna go for that, but I don't see why you would. So if you wanna get aesthetic low angle pictures, make sure they're looking up at the sky or the horizon or whatever. And also like get a background. Don't just use a blue sky background. Anyway, if we just move on though, again, you can see just like taking tons and tons of pictures, just experimenting with different things while I was starting out, being inspired by other people and just, just trying new things by taking loads of pictures. So when you're starting out, go take loads of pictures. In my first earlier missions, I used to take hundreds of pictures. I probably took about four or 500 pictures every single time I went out to go a mission. And nowadays I only take about 40 to 50 pictures, but that's just because I know what I want and I know how I want it to look. So I don't have to worry about taking pictures of everything, but I would highly suggest that if you're starting out, go and take hundreds and thousands of pictures because by that way you learn the settings, you learn how to use the camera properly, you know, learn how to expose properly, learn about composition, learn how to manage subjects and take photos of landscapes. So you just learn all these things by taking loads and loads of pictures. And that's just practice and it comes with going out there and putting the work in. And eventually you'll get to a stage where you know exactly what you want and you know how to do it. So you don't have to spend loads of time taking pictures and you can like live in the moment a bit more. Because that's one thing I found when I was starting out. I literally, as I said, I was taking pictures all the time of random things. But it helped me to get to the stage of where I am now, where I know what I want and how to get it. So anyway, and also I went through loads of editing styles, as you can see how it changed throughout my feed. It was like this really clarified, desaturated kind of look, which I really don't like right now. I don't know why I did that. Also like, what is this? What is this? Like that, I mean, I get the reflection, but it's just a really bad photo. As you can see, there's a lot of bad photos that were in my feed, but that's the nature of progress and changing and learning. And then I went into this like really teal and orange phase, even though, so with this phase, I actually, I saw people doing the teal and orange kind of split, but I didn't know how to do it. So what I would do is go into Lightroom and desaturate the whole photo and then color it in with the adjustment brush to make the colors. So I didn't know how they split it. Now I know if you guys want to know how to do the teal and orange thing, go to the camera calibration in Lightroom and just go to the blue hue and put it all the way to the left and then you'll get like a good teal and orange split. So I went through this phase and then I went through this like really overexposed phase. Like what is this? It doesn't even look natural at all. It's just so bad. <laughs> But I mean, like the caption says, still in search of my own style and I had to go through these style changes and figure out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go with my content. But looking back, it's really bad, but it's valuable because I had to go through that to find where I am now. I mean, look at this one as well. It's just terrible, terrible photos. <laughs> and I went through like trying to expose, overexpose all of the skies. They had a constant thing. What is this? Just like some leaves on the ground. This is so bad more clarity and whiteness and going through it's like again desaturated clarity please like hold off on the clarity i know it's art so you can like do whatever you want but be sparing with using your clarity tool but yeah literally like i said going through it you can see how my style has changed throughout the years and again i, I can't recommend how important it is to go and take loads of photos if you want to be a photographer it's gonna take i've been doing this for like three four years and it's taken me four years to find what i really like doing and to find my style and you can see how many different phases I've gone through to find what I really like. Just gotta go out, put the work in and it'll come over time. So really don't worry about it. Also by practicing and going out and taking photos, not only do you find your style in editing, but you find your style in actually taking photos and you'll learn the composition, what works for Instagram. One thing that I noticed is there's a big difference between traditional photography and Instagram photography. One quick example would be that, <laughs> I mean, they tell me this at university all the time we do a photography project They're like put your subject on the third line
design because I always put it in the middle as you can see but that's just because that's what works on Instagram. Just remember you can always break the rules. Oh, there are no rules but know the rules before you break them. Well know the rules and then break them. So break the rules. Always break the rules when it comes to art. Don't break the law. Eventually I went on to find my style a bit more and found this film kind of look that I like and then I went into a bit of a flatter stylized look but eventually came back to the film look once again and I've spoke about this in a few of my videos before I think the film look is just timeless and it has stood the test of time throughout the years from when photography has begun yeah the film look doesn't really go out of date so that's the reason why I've stuck with the film aesthetic and it's pretty easy to recreate as well I've got loads of tutorials on how to do the film look I've got one video that's done really well on how to edit with the film look so if you're interested in that please check it out literally just search how to get a film look in life and you'll find the video. Anyway, here we are in 2018, studying in Austria. Like, what is happening with my life right now? I don't know, it's going crazy. I'm gonna end this video, I hope you guys found it valuable. If you would like me to do any more videos like this, please let me know. But I hope you learned something, I hope you found it valuable. I literally just said that, but it's fine. We are gonna end this video right now because I've done enough talking for today. If you did like this video, please leave a like. If you do want to leave a comment, leave a comment down below with any other video suggestions. Hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And in the meantime, remember to stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.